la di la 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 do. Sean, are we back on air again? Hello, everybody. Yes, we are. Welcome back. If you've been out to make the pot of tea or whatever, the lady with me is Marina. Marina McCulley. How are you? I'm good. Robert. Welcome. It's you? good to see Thank you. you. Thank and this you. is a woman. This is a healing woman a, of healing ways. And I see, feel the fear and do it anyway. This is a kind of metaphor for life, you know, because all through life we're faced with challenges. Really? Oh, I should tell people where they find you. They find you over there at, sometimes over at Elysium, Elysium. Mm -hmm. yeah, which is good. Uh, but this business of challenging yourself through life, not running away, fight or flight, you're going to fight in whatever way you have to fight. And yes. very rarely is it with closed fists. You take things on in a more gentle and loving way. A more empowering way. A more empowering way. So how would you sum up the kind of service you offer to people, Maria, Marina? Well, this is a workshop really on stepping through your fears. Yeah. So it's about accepting that, yes, you do feel afraid. Yeah. But you're not going to choose to let it stop you. Yeah. So you're going to take a step to overcome it. Because yes. in doing that, then you feel confident or then you feel empowered. You grow it. That which doesn't kill you empowers you. Makes you, makes stronger. you stronger. Absolutely. And that's so if I come to you as a, as a sniveling, little, fearful person, yes. uh, wh which I really am. <laughs> I can I, see that. I would ask, oh, how, would you how, how would you start me off? What, what, would I, what do you say to me if I come to you and say, please help me? Well, we first talk about probably what your fear is. Yeah. Is this a one-to-one -one situation? Well, it can be a one-to-one -one situation. I can do one-to-one -one sessions, but at the moment, it's more based in a, a workshop. Yes. So yeah. we have, you know, between five and 15 students on a workshop. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be talking about all the different fears that people face. So if you were coming as a student, yeah. we would maybe talk about what fears. What fears would I have? Yes. I have an awful admission to make to you in life. Right. <laughs> and it's a dreadful admission. I have no memory of ever having cried in my life, not even okay. from the time my mother died, mm -hmm. uh, and never having had fear right. that dominated me. I've always, known, I've always put fear and problems on a shelf yeah. and said, here I am, come and do with me what you will, come and sort me out. Yes. And it was always something I went to and, and sorted out. But I, I'm, I must be a very sad human be being that doesn't know how to cry and doesn't know what fear really is. No, I would be f fearful yes. of jumping out of an aircraft with a parachute because I don't trust anybody. Yes. And that's no one, unless I packed it myself, and then I'm not knowledgeable enough to pack it myself. So where am I going? Well, what am I doing wrong? Well, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just that we very often view ourselves in the way we should be. So we yeah. should be crying or we should feel a certain way. And then mm. if we're not feeling that, sometimes we'll take on the belief that there's something wrong with us. Uh -huh. So there's something wrong with you that you're not crying. Yeah. But instead, you're behaving in a different way. And usually we'll behave in a different way because we know that that works. Yeah. And we've learned that from the past. We've learned from certain experiences or certain events in our lives yeah. that that works and that keeps me safe. You see, one of the events uh, that was a character forming event in my life was the death of my mother. Yes. Now, she died 57 years of age. I'm now 12 years older than she was when she, was, uh, when she died. Mm -hmm. this is the, the, the thing is that I, I was a tower of strength for my entire family. Yes, you stepped that into time. that role. And I was there with great ease. I had no desire to cry. They all collapsed on the bed crying whenever mm. she passed away. I just couldn't figure this out. She's dead. She had to die. She's on her way somewhere else. So wh no big deal. But six months down the road, having sort of paid my lodgements into the bank of their recovery, yes. I felt one night absolutely distraught. I put my hand out. I said, if there is a God there, I need help. Interesting thing happened, and I share it with you. That night, I sat bolt upright in my bed mm -hmm. and saw the shape of my mother's back okay. in her long dressing gown, yes. walking out the bedroom door. And then I remembered before wakening, I had been dreaming. And in the dream before wakening, I remembered when I was awake, that my mother's face was at the heart of a tree in my garden, surrounded by birds and beautifully illuminated. So two things taken together, the dream and the awakening and the conscious observation 
of a, a figure I took to be my mother walking out. Yes. Now, is that mad? Is there any reality in that? Or how do you put a, a handle on that? Well, I suppose when we're looking at like a holistic approach, you're looking at four different levels. So you have what is called your spiritual, your spiritual yeah. body, your spiritual level. Mm -hmm. So it's believing that we're more than a physical body. Yeah. And for you, you saw what you thought was your mother's mm. spirit. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. she was connecting to you on a spiritual level. Mm -hmm. So people can do that on like a dream mm. state yeah. or what, you know, what it feels mm. like a dream state mm. or on your subconscious level. And very often what we're dealing with, if we're dealing with grief or something, we need that wee bit of connection to say, yeah. you know, it's okay, or mm. stay calm, or I'm safe, mm. or you're okay. What kind, of what kind of things are people presenting with in the modern age when they come to the, this, uh, the Susan Jeffers workshop. workshop, feel the fear and do it anyway? What are they saying to you? At what the moment, the there's probably a big fear of failure. Of At failure. the moment, probably because of different changes in the economy. Mm. People are afraid to maybe step away. They're afraid to lose their jobs. Mm. Very often, we'll focus a lot of our energy in one area of our lives. Mm. So if we are work, 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 or we are relationship, 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 mm. the threat of maybe losing one or other of those yeah. is horrifying to people because really? their energy is all spent in maybe work, and that's where they have their identity. Mm. This is people yes. living for someone else, whether the someone be work or a relationship person, that they're building their life, they're, they're, they're building their propensity to be happy based in one on area. one other person. Yes, or yeah. one particular. Yeah. If you yes. love me, I'll be happy. If you don't love me, I'll be suicidal. Yes. That's crap, So it's it? bringing it back to yourself. This workshop yeah. helps you bring it back to yourself wow. to say that you have the power to feel yeah. complete no matter what's going on. How do I do that? Do I do it by waking up in the morning and going for a walk at dawn and well sniffing the ocean or Yes, whatever. those are lots of things to make you feel better and look after your well-being. One of the big things is to try and not focus on one area of your life. So spread it out so that you have things going on in like work, relationships, hobbies, spirituality, taking time out, having play time. That's a big thing for people mm. forget to have fun and they forget yeah. to relax and chill out. Yeah, so I'm it's spreading it out. I'm equally sad. I like <laughs> modest, <laughs> modest good food. Modest good food. Yes. Not a lot. Yes. And uh, modest amount of, of wine to go with it. Yes. Uh, and what else do I do? I walk in the hills. Yes. That's, so it's that's putting in a balance. Yeah, and so that works yeah. well. But a lot of people tend to maybe, when we're out of balance, mm. that's whenever we realize there's something wrong. Here. Yeah. And what is out of balance when you say when we are out our of balance? Focus, our focus. Yeah. So usually it's in our mental body, which is telling us, you know, you've gone off track. You're, it, it could be that you're going into, I'm a failure. Things are not working for me. Why yeah. have I not got this and this and this and this? Yes. And we blame outside forces. We blame the economy. We blame other people in our lives. And so it's remembering that, you know, you are the only person that is yeah. responsible for your life. You see, I hacked this when I remember a few years ago. Uh, when I started to get less work and I had to go and the economy was pressing yes. and I had to start doing my budget every week I invented my famous one egg omelette. This okay. was my dinner. Yes. I had a one egg omelette with uh, now a, a carrot will last you an awfully long time I grated the carrot into it, I chopped <laughs> onion into it, okay. I chopped tomato into it and this I was feeding myself for sixpences but it was an adaption in order to deal with the change situation. Yes. And is that what we're talking about? It is what we're talking about. And I think the biggest fear for people is that whatever happens, and Susan will talk about this in her book, I'll not handle it. I can't handle it. That mm. is the underlying biggest fear for people. They think that if I lose my job, if I don't have enough money, mm. if he doesn't do what I think he should do, if I can't, fulfill that mm. need for my children, mm. then I won't be able to handle That's it. That's the tricky one. For my children. Yes. Most people can, can whack it for themselves. Yes. You know, uh, you punish me all you want, 
take away my food, I can live for a week on bread and water, no bother to me. Yes. But well, dare you take, don't, I don't want you to take anything from my children. children yes. Now there's the tricky one. That How do you come to terms with that? We have a wee exercise in the workshop that gives you different um, ways of reacting to situations. And one of them will be on money, one of them will be on time, one of them will be on family. And sometimes it's a co I'll be accommodating, I'll avoid that, I will yes. be forceful. And if every time we do the family one, yes. everybody walks to being forceful. Hello, Celia, how are you? They'll stand up for their family every single every time. time. That's Whereas it yeah. may be something with their own time, they'll step back and they'll say, oh, it's okay. Yeah. You know, somebody yeah. skips the queue or different. And that, and again, that again is bringing into the equation the, the thing we talked about earlier. You're either outreaching to other people to help them or depending on other people and yes. both those scenarios contribute to your happiness. They do. So even children you've got to stand back from. Well you have, you have to let them go Yeah. and you have to detach from them. Sometimes whenever we step in and we take over it doesn't allow them to be independent, it doesn't allow them to empower themselves mm. and so they won't learn what they're capable of doing unless we allow them to do it. Yeah. So sometimes we have a belief attached that we have to do that. I have to make sure my children are alright because the fear is that you will look like a bad mother or you will look like a bad father and you'll not have it sorted. Oh, I have a glorious thing <laughs> in my life. Yes. I do not care one jit or tot what anyone what thinks of thinks. me. Yes. And that's a wonderful freedom to yes. have. There's and a great belief that says, what other people think of me is none of my business. It's none of my business indeed. None Let them keep business. it, you know, yeah. that's the whole And their thing reaction there. and their actions are nothing to do with you. Yeah. So there are like three types of business. My business, your business and any other business. My yeah. business is your reaction and actions. Yeah. Your business is what you react to and yes. you act on and then there's other other business which is the economy and whatever happens yeah. to us that w is out of our control and but the only it. one yeah. that we can work with or react to is our own business. Our own business, that's yeah. it. That's the how only thing we have power yeah, over. How long have you been doing this work? I've been doing this work probably about seven or eight years now, yeah. Rowan, and yeah. I love it. You love it, yeah. <laughs> but it's obviously not going to make you a millionaire. Well, you never know. You never know. But it gives me great satisfaction, and it's great to see somebody overcome their fear yeah. or walk into the room in the morning feeling afraid even to be in a group yeah. of people, feeling afraid Would to speak out. Would you not feel tempted to say to someone like that, look, get a life, shake yourself, go out and smell the coffee, go and have a walk and come back when you're cured? Well, no, because you don't know what that person has experienced in their lives. You need to walk in the other man's you shoes. You need to walk in their shoes. Yeah. And we can't judge anybody else because very often the reason why they behave a certain way is because they believe something about themselves from the past and that's usually related to an event or something. Oh, yeah. So you may believe, you know, because you stepped into those shoes of looking after everybody, I'm a strong person. Yeah. And that's a good belief and that's a belief of what yeah. Susan would call the higher self. But we have this other boy over here, the chatterbox, yeah. the lower self saying, you're useless. You yeah. can't even cry. Yeah. Sure, well, there's something wrong with you. you oh, no, I believe I'm God. No. That's my <laughs> oh problem. Dear, okay. Yeah, I need, I, need, I need guidance on this. <laughs> right, very because good. Uh, well, I'm delighted around, to be in your presence. Well, then. I bless you. Bless <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and keep doing the wonderful <laughs> things you're doing. Oh, I will. And, uh, how do people find you? Now? Tell the people exactly where they must come. They, they can, can find do. me in, Uri, in Elysium Wellness Centre. And you, follow, you find Elys Elysium by following your nose. <laughs> because yes, there is a most magnificent... There is a most magnificent uh, incense. Uh, incense burning smell from Elysium. And this is the book, the Su Susan Jeffers, mm -hmm. Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Feel the Fear Training Workbook. And you get this with uh, Marina at uh, Elysium. And uh, Ma uh, Marina and that's just Macaulay. The canal court. Ah, yeah. And follow your nose, as we say. <laughs> that's good. Okay, Marina, thank you for thank coming Thank you in. very much. Has that lovely. been useful? It's been good. It's been lovely, yes. I'll call thank and see you, you very down much. there. And yes, uh, do. I might, you don't do hypnotherapy or levitation no. or... <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at the minute. That could be my next step. We should step. work on it. We could work on it. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. It's yeah, we'll pleasure. have some music, Sean. Thank you.